Hey guys, Caitlin here, and I'm a couple weeks into my new fellowship, and I'm finally getting into the good part, where I'm doing a lot of ER shifts, I've been to lecture, and I've actually done three different simulation lab cases. And in lecture and simulation lab, we really focus on the stroke protocol. Things like diagnosing a stroke early, determining the severity of a stroke, and then finally, inclusion and contraindication criteria for TPA. So for this week's video, I wanna focus on all those things and really narrow down when and when you do not wanna use TPA. So when it comes to strokes, the time it takes to recognize a stroke to the time it takes to finally receive treatment is called the door to needle time. And in healthcare, our goal for that time is less than 60 minutes. And I understand, of course, there is so much history, risk factors, or physical exam findings that you have to get from the patient before you do this, not to mention the non-contrast CT that you have to order to rule out any hemorrhagic stroke. But the most important question to ask a stroke victim is their last known normal. So the last time a patient was acting normal before their symptoms started. And this determines the type of management the patient will receive in your care. To qualify for TPA, you have to at least be in the time frame of 4.5 hours since the last known normal. And there are other varying indications for three hours since the last known normal. After figuring out a patient's last known normal and any relevant history or risk factors for stroke, I like to do a full neuro exam. And then I move on to determining the severity of the stroke. Currently, a well-known scale to evaluate the severity of a stroke is by the National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale. So to determine the stroke severity number using this scale, I really like to use the NIHSS calculator through the MDCalc app. Now, this healthcare scale tends to be long and extensive to remember. And using this app, MedCalc, makes it super easy for you to click through all the options and makes it easier for you to use on the go while you are in the ER. After you have figured out if a patient qualifies for TPA, in other words, they have met all the inclusion criteria, so they are older than 18 years old, they have a confirmed ischemic stroke, and they are less than 3 to 4.5 hours since the onset of their symptoms, then you need to figure out if they have any contraindications to TPA. And there are many contraindications to TPA, like absolute contraindications, relative contraindications, and then there are varying contraindications to the amount of time since the onset of symptoms. Since TPA is the drug used to break up the clot causing the stroke, most of the contraindications to this drug are anything that might put the patient at risk for more bleeding. So a history of a GI bleed or intracranial hemorrhage, platelets less than 100K or any heparin use, but the list is very extensive. MDCalc has a full list of all the TPA contraindications while also making it easily accessible so you don't miss a thing for your patient. And just remember guys, the risk for hemorrhage after giving TPA rises significantly thereafter. So, it is super important to engage these protocols while also talking to the patient and their family before administering TPA. And a little fun fact, TPA has the least risk for hemorrhage in a posterior circulating stroke. And what is this posterior circulating stroke, you may ask? The posterior circulation is part of the circle of Willis. And these are super common questions to be asked on test. It's what sort of symptoms correlate with what part of the circle of Willis. So I want to review that as the last part of this video. So first let's start with the part of the circle of Willis that causes the most strokes, which is the middle cerebral artery. All the symptoms associated with this artery come from the acronym of FAST, which stands for face, arm, speech, and time. So these patients may have facial droop, arm hemiparesis, or aphasia. The next artery I want to talk about is the anterior cerebral artery. And with this artery, think lower extremity problems. So any leg hemiparesis or any urinary incontinence. 
And also since the anterior part of the brain controls personality, any personality changes can be associated with this artery as well. If you remember Phineas Gage from psychology, he was a railroad worker who accidentally had a nail jabbed right into the lower eye and going through the anterior part of his brain. He actually lived, but his personality changed because of it, and it was a big study in determining what part of the brain controls what. So this will help you remember that the anterior cerebral artery might have personality changes. If you remember the homunculus from anatomy, the anterior cerebral artery supplies blood to the medial part of the brain, which controls the lower extremity. The middle cerebral artery supplies blood to the lateral part of the brain, controlling the face and the upper extremity. And the last artery I'm going to talk about is the posterior circulating artery, which supplies blood to the occipital lobe. Now, the last artery I want to talk about is the posterior cerebral artery. And most of the symptoms that arise from a stroke in this section of the brain affect the eye and the ear. So there might be third nerve palsies, nystagmus, bilateral vision changes, or you might have vertigo in the ears causing severe dizziness. Try to remember that this is just a basic overview of these three arteries. There are many different subsets of these arteries, and these basic tips that I gave you today are just to help you narrow down which part of the brain might be having the stroke. If there's any leg involvement, it can't be the middle cerebral artery. If there's any eye involvement, it's most likely the posterior cerebral artery. So just keep this in mind during your test. And that's it guys, a quick overview of the stroke protocol in the ED. Today we talked about how to determine the severity of a stroke, TPA indications and contraindications, and what symptoms correlate with what artery in the brain the stroke is currently in. Tune in next Wednesday, guys.